welcome to today's 3DQF video. My name's Robert, and the aim of today's video is to guide you through getting our PLA set up on the Bamboo Labs 3D printer. We're going to discuss the material profiles and what needs to be tweaked to allow our PLA to work efficiently on the Bamboo Labs ecosystem, and also the history of how we've changed our spools over the course of the last 16 months to make them work better and fit inside the Bamboo AMS system. So without a further ado and wasting any more time, let's get on to the profile settings. Effectively, there's three settings that need to be adjusted inside Bamboo Labs process to make our material print really nicely on a Bamboo Labs printer. This is inclusive of the A1, the A1 Mini, and the P1, P1S, P1P, and X1C. They all work at broadly the same speed, and thus the temperature profiles works across the whole range pretty efficiently. So first thing you need to do is set up a generic profile inside Bamboo Studios. You need to adjust the minimum and maximum temperature threshold up to 220 and 250 degrees. Second adjustment is to adjust the first layer temperature up to 220 degrees and then the subsequent layer temperature up to 250 degrees. Although this seems hot, I can assure you it's perfectly fine. The material flows so quickly through the Bamboo's hot end that it needs this extra heat soak as effectively new filament coming into the hot end is effectively taking energy away from the hot end. This overdrive allows the hot end to compensate for the cooling effect of fresh filament arriving at the nozzle at such a high rate of speed. There's nothing particularly unfamiliar about overdriving a hot end. Back in the day when we used to print with 0.8 and 1mm nozzles, we would have to do the same thing. It's all about the flow of material. If you increase the flow of material, you really need a very thermally efficient hot end to keep up with the demand of fresh material arriving, trying to effectively cool the hot end down. If you don't run a significant enough heat inside the hot end, what you find is the material will start to solidify again, or as I like to say, it freezes in the hot end. This will produce under extrusion, it will also produce clicking and various other third party effects from that that could lead to a completely failed print. It is true that by varying the flow of material or the speed of material and the hot end temperature, you can create certain different effects. Most commonly with 3DQF PLA, that's a satin finish or a gloss finish. We have an article for this, which we'll link at the bottom of the description that discusses how to get a gloss and how to get a satin effect. But it's worthwhile noting that if you're getting a satin finish from our product, then you're generally speaking at the lower end of the material profile. And if you get in a gloss finish, then you're generally at the upper end of the material profile. Neither is wrong in terms of the satin or a gloss finish, but it is a handy key or indicator to where you are working with the profile of the material and the printing speed and the hot end temperature that you've got. It works better with dark colors more so than light, but still it's a nice rule of thumb to use. So adjust those three settings and save that off as a PLA profile. Then for future use, it's dead easy to just upload it and away you go for printing. Predominantly, all the colors perform broadly the same. You shouldn't need to adjust the colors from running from a yellow to a green, for instance, or a black to a white. We sometimes find that there's a slight difference between the very bright colors versus the very dark colors in terms of bright colors needing a touch more temperature. But for the vast majority of users, there shouldn't be a problem to run the same profile for all the different materials. So the next topic of conversation is the Bamboo AMS spool system. So the AMS system has been a bit of a changer for the industry. Bamboo came along with a system that both printed fast, but then also had this color changing system that was relatively, uh, a, well, a completely new idea in certain respects, or at least how it did the color changing. One of the design aspects that they used for this AMS system was a roller style unloader. This produces challenges. It produces a design constraint in terms of the dimensional ability for the system to house third party spools. Bamboo obviously made it work perfect for their spools, but as a lot of customers like to have choice and not rely on a sole manufacturer, it did make it rather a challenge for companies like ourselves. So in Late 2023, when we realized that the bamboo was really going to stir up the market, we set in places to change our spool. 
Initially, as many of you'll know, we had the Mark 18 spool, which was a larger corrugate spool. This larger corrugate spool was a little bit wide and also a little bit uh, big in diameter to fit comfortably inside the AMS system. Thankfully, with a little bit of development, we managed to get some spool rings that did work, but the significant disadvantage for them was, unfortunately, you couldn't close the hood on the AMS system. As we progressed into 2023, we realized that, right, we need to make a change on this. This printer is really taking off or the bamboo ecosystem and the AMS is not going anywhere. So we changed to what we class as a Mark 19 spool. We reduced the width of the spool down from 76 millimeters down to 69 millimeters. And we also reduced, reduced the diameter of the actual spool flange down to 194 millimeters. This gave us more dimensional freedom to produce a proper ring adapter or spool adapter to allow the spools to unwind inside the AMS unit. Initially, we followed the course of many other design solutions that had been put to the marketplace, which was effectively an outer ring that clipped on the outside of the spool. This seemed to work well. It was a simple solution, you used less than 20 grams of filament per side, clipped on, put into the AMS, and then as such, you would have a full color changing using our 3DQF filament. Unfortunately, what materialized over a period of time was that although this system works, it's not ideal. We, as you know, use a cardboard spool. Now, the problem with a cardboard spool is it can be damaged in transport, and that perfect edge that they leave the factory with is not necessarily guaranteed to arrive with yourselves in exactly the same condition. This meant that the spool would get damaged and then the ring would either be too loose to securely hold on to the side of the spool. This then produced a problem where the rings would disconnect and they would come free from the actual bamboo spool or from our spool inside the bamboo AMS system. This was a problem. Um, the problem or the way to resolve that problem was to tighten up the fit of the actual ring that clipped on the spool. This then introduced a new problem. This introduced some warping into the actual spool, but we were stuck. We'd gone down to 69 millimeters, which was really right on the edge of where we could actually go in terms of width at the time. We'd also had the tooling made for the cardboard flange as we stopped cutting them out of card sheet and moved to a die pressed technology. And that was a fixed diameter. What we really needed to do was narrow down the spool more but we didn't know if we could fit the same amount of filament on the same space. We'd run a number of calculations and then towards the back end of 2023, we decided, you know what, we can get an extra four millimeters, narrow a spool, yet not overload the spool. So the fact that the flanges uh, don't have enough buffer space at the very edge. In December of 2024, this process took shape. We changed the spool width from 69 millimeters down to 65 millimeters, and they started pushing them out of the factory. This then gave us the design freedom to relook completely at the bamboo spool adapters that we'd had. We weren't happy with them as soon as we'd released them effectively, and we started having issues with them popping off and coming free. So this was a great opportunity to now properly address the AMS spool system. That's where it brings us to this. This is our new AMS spool adapter. This is a prototype version, but we will continue to update the Maker World file with the very latest version. So currently, this is Mark 6. We have a Mark 7, which is ready for release, and that's learning off or taking from some of the feedback that you guys have very gracefully given us to say, listen, you have a couple issues here, try and tweak this and see what you can do. We are limited in terms of dimensional tolerance and the fact that these need to be backwards compatible with the early version of the Mark 19. That means that the spool adapter has to work for both the 69 millimeter wide core, but also the 65 millimeter wide core. We've accomplished this by using two locking sections. Inside the spool, we have these male tabs that locate inside the female receptacle here. There's two indents inside here that allow them to lock into both the 69 millimeter position and also the 65 millimeter position. 
Another challenge was trying to find the space required inside the AMS system, because at 69 millimeters, we are right on the limits of how wide we can actually go inside there. This meant that we had to place a chamfer here, a rise on the actual spool. This narrows this section of the actual spool and allows it to fit deep within the AMS system without causing friction on either side of the supporting tabs. This gave us a little bit more design freedom, but unfortunately it did mean that we had to use support. The items are printed in this orientation and thus this is an unsupported edge. We could have placed a round in here, but it wouldn't have been large enough. And then we would have also lost the dimensional space that we were trying to get by putting an overhang in the first instance. Thankfully, we saw it that anyone printing these spool adapters will be printing them for the sole use inside an AMS system. One of the amazing features about the AMS system is the interface layer that can be done on support. We use the interface layer as on top of the PLA support material. We tried it without using interface with PLA, and we found that because it's such a small cross section in this here, that the PLA support material would bond too well and would be too difficult to actually remove from the overhang. However, turning PETG interface layer on means that it can print the support layer in PLA, then do one layer of PETG support interface and then print the rest of the PLA component on top. This means at the end of the print, it beautifully removes, leaving no deformed surface and a nice smooth printed surface effect so that the component any issues. That solves the problem for support. It does mean that to print these correctly, you do need some PETG to for the interface layer, but like I say, once you've used PTG as an interface layer for support, I think it's something that you'll use for a very long period of time as it works so exceptionally well and is much cheaper than the alternative, which was support material, uh, which was done exactly for this job. So there's three components to the new spool adapter. You've got the male and the female version, and then the locking insert ring or spacer ring. This spacer ring is specifically used for the 69mm wide Mark 19 spool. You don't have to use it, but it just leaves a gap in between the two surfaces. It just effectively drops into the core here and acts as a spacer bush. So when you place the actual spool together, it locks in and creates a nice section here. Now, as mentioned pre previously, these are a prototype. We are still working on the design to revise it. As I speak now, there's a Mark 7 version uh, that we've learned from the feedback that you guys have given to us and how we could make it better. Most of these revisions are for making it more compatible with the early Mark 19 spool. They work absolutely perfect with the latest 65 mil version, but we want a one solution for those spools. We need this solution to work, no matter if you have the old Mark 19 or a new Mark 19 as an encompassing solution to solve that for you. So that's what we're working quite heavily on it. For if you've got the newer, narrower 65 mil core, realistically, the Mark 6 version is, is perfect and you're happy to go printing with it. If you have some of the wider cores, just know that we're still effectively working on it at this moment in time. So that covers most of the topics today in terms of settings and profile settings for the bamboo. 220 for your first layer, 250 thereafter. And then the link for the download of this is on the Bamboo Maker world, and that'll be down below. So you can have a look there. And that's all for today. So thank you for coming along. Hope this has been informative for you. And we can discuss various other performance related within the Bamboo systems on later videos. But once again, thank you for coming along to the video today. And most importantly, keep on printing. Cheers, guys.